Have you recently purchased a new or used vehicle? Or perhaps you are researching for a new or used vehicle, but you're wondering how to set up and use all the technology that we find in a driver's information system and the infotainment screen. If so, you're at the right place. Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and today I'm going to show you how to do just that. But before I do, take a moment to give us a like and hit that subscribe button down below. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Chuck Spaeth Ford in New Ulm, Minnesota. Welcome to our how-to video on the Ford Bronco. Now this is uh, the Wild Track trim with the Sasquatch package and as far as uh, interior packages and things, this has got the luxury package. Uh, that is the uh, top of the line. So this has uh, just about everything on it except for leather powered seats. So um, on the dashboard you have got an analog speedometer with a partially digital engine temperature gauge and then uh, your digital information screen is just to the right of that. Now the information screen itself that you see uh, where the two zeros are for the miles per hour and RPM and then the, the the safety systems with the car icon that pretty much stays the same all the time what you can change is what's over on the right where you see the drivetrain uh, now to do that you've got controls on the right side of the steering wheel uh, you've got a menu button a back button up and down and OK so if I press the menu button I can I can see here like this for instance is my view so if I click on that and click OK, I can have calm screen, fuel economy, trip one, off-road, tire pressure, and then I can configure my view. So if I, but I, I'm gonna go down one more first and that brings me back to the calm screen. So I'm gonna go down where this configure was. I'm gonna press OK and then I can add a remove. For instance, if I want trip two, I can press OK and trip two will be added to that screen as I scroll through it. I can have average speed, off-road, which is checked on, pitch and roll. Um, I'm, I'm gonna click that on, it'll be fun to see. Power distribution, we'll click that on. And then tire pressure's on, and then um, seat belts, okay. Now, because I've selected so many things these are grayed out so i'm going to go back and uncheck one of them just so that you can see them more clearly so you can have one on seat belts gauges turbo boost oil temperature transmission temperature battery voltage and now plane now i heard a comment uh, from another reviewer and one of their th comments was you can't see the media on the screen but i'm going to bet that you can if you check this button so I'm gonna hit now plane. All right, let's use the back button. Okay, so sure enough, there it shows up. All right, so let's see, I added a couple other screens, so let's go back here and let's see if I, here, pitch and roll, that's the one I added. So let's go back and go back one more time. Now I can go down to trip and fuel and I can see specific gauges only related to trip and fuel. So it doesn't matter which one of these you, you start on, they will all show up as you go through uh, with the down arrow. So fuel economy, trip one, trip two, average speed, and then engine start, stop. All right, if I go back, and uh, no matter which one I click on, it's the same thing. We just toggle through all those. So I'm gonna go back again. You can go down to off-road. So basically you can kind of set this, and I'm just gonna click okay, because I'll see all of these. You can just kind of set it specifically to like, okay, I just want off-road stuff in this. So you're not seeing, you know, maybe your fuel economy while you're off-roading. And you can quickly toggle through just that set of uh, gauges. I'm going to go back again. I'm going to go back one more. You've got navigation. Okay, so navigation is the one where you don't get a bunch of different screens. Everything you see here is a different item. So like if I click on my home, you know, you'd have to enter it and then it would find it and you could click OK, but it doesn't give you any other screens like the other uh, ones did earlier. Previous destinations, you can look at that, okay? And then, so you'd have to go through each of these uh, individually. 
Okay, I'm gonna hit the back button. You can go down to phone. Okay, there's no phone paired, so I wouldn't, I, I, but if I did, I could see it there. All right, I'm gonna hit the, the down arrow, and I'm gonna go to audio. Let's go to, say, Sirius XM. Okay, you see how it just it disappears, right? It doesn't actually show you Sirius XM. Okay, so what we need to do to have that show is if I go back to menu for a minute and I go up to my view, click OK. Okay, I'm all the way at the bottom. I'm going to press OK to add or remove screens. And so I'm going to go down here and I am going to add. Oops, where did it go? I'll go up here. Now playing. That's the one you want to click if you want to have your media show up on your driver's information screen. So now I'm going to just hit back. And now I can have that as part of my view as I go up and down. I can actually see the media in the screen. Okay, and if I hit my change channel button, see how it changes? These are all the presets. So it's going back and forth between AM, FM, and, and Sirius XM because it memorizes settings, for our, um, settings from all of them. Okay, now, on the, the other than that, there isn't anything else you can change. Uh, I will show you over on the right-hand side, if I turn cruise control on, you'll see the gap setting button right here, and I can just press it to increase or decrease the gap. Now, if you've never used adaptive cruise control before, what this button does is determine when your adaptive cruise is on, how far behind the car you are. The more lines you see, the further back it will put you from the car. The less lines you see, the closer it gets you to the car in front of you. Okay, so you have to adjust that to, to where you're comfortable. That's the cruise on and off. This, of course, is the lane keeping system on. So I'll just press OK over here. And there you can see the little lines around the car. And they light up as you go over lines. So it knows if you're uh, crossing the line or not. Then, of course, you have your uh, plus and minus for... Uh, Increase or decreasing the cruise control speed. You have a cancel or resume here. And then either one of these works as the set button. Okay, that's it for the driver's information screen. Next, we're gonna move over to the infotainment screen. Okay, so the infotainment screen is a 12 inch screen. Of course, it's touch. It's got wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, navigation, AM, FM, and Sirius XM, Bluetooth, uh, and of course, uh, Wi Fi, uh, 4G Wi Fi LTE hotspot. Now, um, the, this is Ford's Sync 4 system, and it, it is very, very responsive. And we've seen it in, you know, the, the new Fords that are coming out. So it works the same way, but um, we'll, we'll go through it here. Basically, um, what they've done here is they've put the basic buttons that, you know, you would want right down here, left this as the main part of the screen to display whatever you push on, and then left this side window here uh, to display a number of things. So, side window. The way it works is right now we're in navigation. Okay, so if I click the arrow, navigation moves over to the main screen and then it's replaced by whatever's next in the list. Okay, um, if uh, you want to just toggle what's through here, you can use these arrows or you can see all the screens at once, kind of like this, and just kind of scroll through them. But all you see is the icons. So, uh, a little easier sometimes to see what it is if I just click on these uh, arrows. So here we go. We got fuel economy, off-road status, zone lighting, uh, your media, Bluetooth or phone, trip one, and then you can say here switch to trip two, fuel economy, and that's, that's where we're back. Now you notice fuel economy does not have the arrow. So if it doesn't show that arrow, like zone lighting does, you can't move it to the full screen. Only the ones with the little arrow can you move to the full screen, okay? Up here at the top, if you click on the time, you can just go ahead and adjust it right from here, which is really, really cool. All right, so let's uh, let's start by going through the, uh, the buttons down here. So if I go to audio, 
Uh, this is, of course, Sirius XM, but AM and FM will work very, very similarly. So, what's here? Well, if you want to look at all the sources, you can click here, and then you can see all of your sources. Okay. If I go back here, I can, uh, how do I find a station? Well, I can browse, okay, and I can look for categories. I can also just uh, use this, and I can look at different stations here. And this is just going by number, so 103, 104, 105, or I can hit direct to and type in the number. So those are the ways you can program a, a station. How do, I, how do I save a station as a preset? Well, I find something here, and I just click and hold, and it's saved. Now that's changed to Lucy. Okay, so I, I can do that. Now I can also look at related if I want to, uh, but that's the basics of it. So I'll, and I said AM and FM are the same, but I'll just show you real quick. So it's all set up, all your presets are the same. Um, you notice it has two little bars down here. That means you have one more set of presets down here. Okay, um, and then of course I can go here and say I want a direct tune and I can type in that number right here. Um, I can also go up to sound and I can do the tone settings. Just click and drag. I can do balance and fade. Again, click and drag or you can use the arrows. Speed compensated volume, you can adjust that. That's just a click. And then sound mode. Do you want stereo or surround? And again, you just click on the one that you prefer. Hit the back button a couple times. The other way that you can tune in FM, let's say you want to go station by station by station. If you come right down below the screen, there's a tune button on the right, and I can just scroll that, and I can tune manually. Okay. And it's the same thing with uh, Sirius XM, if you wanted to use that, you can just go one by one. I did, I did it the other way uh, with the touchscreen before, but you can use that, uh, that dial down there. And then AM works the same way. You can direct tune, look at your sources, adjust your sound. Okay, that's audio. So I don't have a phone connected, but I could connect it to my phone and then this, that's where this would display. So your call history and your messages and all that kind of stuff would show up. Let's go to navigation. It's got a really nice map, okay? You can pinch and zoom. Uh, you can rotate if you want, all right? So I'll hit reset view. So the questions are always, well, how do I plot a route? Over on the steering wheel, on the right-hand side, you have a, a little picture of a guy that looks like he's speaking. That's our voice command. So if I click that, navigate to McDonald's. Which item would you like? Four. Starting route to McDonald's. Obey traffic laws, be alert and use voice commands while driving. Once you have a course plotted in your navigation, the turn-by-turn -turn directions will show up in your driver's information screen on the far right-hand side, just like any other car with, with uh, navigation. So uh, it'll appear on the far right-hand side. It'll disappear after you make your turn, but when you come to the next turn, it'll pop up again. Okay, so we've got our course. So the next question is, how do I end a course? To cancel it, I just, I'm gonna click here. Okay, and if I want to plot another course, I just hit search. Okay, this is the way you can manually type in something to search. You can look at recents, saved, gas stations, food, attractions, parking, ATM, shopping, oh my gosh, rest area, coffee, emergency, hotel, and Ford dealerships, of course. Now. The other question is, uh, how do I adjust the settings in my navigation? Like if I want certain like points of interest, we call them POIs, like I want gas stations to show up no matter where I am. Okay, so if we go up to this little menu button here, um, so show on map, if I go here, uh, these are all POIs. So if I say, I want gas stations to show, I just check it, go back, and then if I go back again, now, so you see gas stations starting to show up. So anywhere I drive, gas stations automatically show up. If we go up to this little menu button here, then we can say 
more settings and we can go to routing and map preferences and you can set all these just by clicking on them breadcrumbs is, is kind of cool especially if you're off-roading it kind of leaves a little trail where you've been even if there is no road right um, and then you can say alert preferences I want to alert for a school zone or a railroad or a cross-country border um, and then of course you can uh, do the privacy and about uh, if you like something like a particular location you can star it and then if you click here this is your previous destinations or your recent destinations so if it's something you go to frequently you can just click there that's how you get into the navigation and that's how you do it now the other thing that you can do is you can hit this and make it full screen which is really cool then you have that full beautiful full 12 inches all right let's move over to the apps button In the apps button here you can find some mobile apps that'll work uh, you can do Apple CarPlay Android Auto or mobile apps help again this is wireless Apple CarPlay wireless Android Auto uh, and it works really well and once you hook that up, whether it's the Bluetooth or Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, when you go to your sources in your audio, Apple CarPlay will show up as one of those. This also does have wireless charging. Okay, so let's go to settings. All right, so we'll go through a few of these. So radio, um, AM HD radio on, and how many preset pages do you want? Okay, remember I had two pages of presets down here? Well, this is where you determine how many you have. So this is laid out really, really nicely. You know, you just click that eye and you can get a uh, description of what it is. But it's easier just to watch our video. All right, coming down here, you can click on sound. We saw it before in the uh, audio settings, but it's there again. Uh, let's look under vehicle. So here you got some settings. You can have a 30 minute max idle on or off, rear occupant alert, on or off if I do that it's on if I do that it's off um, you can look under my key and you can get information or create your key there um, we don't look at that one but remote start setup okay climate control you can have that set to auto uh, you can you can do the seats and the steering wheel you can set those to auto you have dirt and then the duration of the the start so the last 50 minutes it'll shut off let's just click on one of these auto means if it senses that it's cold outside it's going to turn on the heat and heated seats and heat steering wheel if it senses it's warm outside it's going to turn on the air conditioning or you can say i want it on the last settings and you can do that for all those areas all right um windows okay you can have it set to remote open or not remote open let's go down to uh, locks Okay, you can have auto lock on, auto on lock on, miss lock, chirp, switch inhibit, audible feedback, and remote on lock. So uh, these are mostly just quick push and turns the feature on or off. This one, if it gives you an arrow, means I want, when I hit the remote, I want all doors to unlock or just the driver's door. So lots of ways to, to adjust things in there. So let's go back out here. Um, you can adjust the clock here, but remember I showed you, you can just click on the clock and go right to it. All right, general. Well, you can set language, the units for temperature, measurement, tire. Uh, do you want that beep on when you touch the screen? Well, that's where you turn it off. And then you just have a software license and some other uh, gobbledygook down there. All right, if I go to display, I can have display off or calm screen. So if I hit the display off, it goes blank. Now, the screen's still functioning. Everything, your navigation's still running, your audio's still running. It's just that the screen goes black. A little bit easier on your eyes at night. You need it back, just tap the screen. And there it comes. Want to see the calm screen? There you go, minimal display, just time and date. Okay, you can physically adjust the brightness if you want. Okay. I honestly don't see a huge difference, but I do when I go to the dark part. That, then I, then I, uh, then I do see that. I'm just gonna hit reset and go back. 
and then you can set it to mode. So the mode can be day. Okay, and then you get a really different look. Not only that, but it changes the display on your driver's information screen as well. You get this white background. Or you can go to auto, and in auto, it uses sensors inside the car to determine how light it is. So you can change that. So I'm gonna leave it on night, where it was. And we'll go back down here. Now there's two dots down here. That means there's another screen. So I'm gonna swipe over. You can look at your connectivity here. And so you can look at the Bluetooth, wireless app projection, manage your Wi-Fi networks, connected vehicle features. Well, you can go down here and say, do I wanna share vehicle data, share vehicle location, share driving data. You can turn those things off, okay? So this, you might wanna go in here and just decide if you wanna share that information or not. And then of course, the digital assistant you can have on or off. I'm going to go back twice here. This is where you'd set up the vehicle hotspot. Uh, this is where you'd look at any mobile apps that you have. And right now, of course, um, it's just Android apps. But uh, we saw another button for that down here. You can. This does get over-the-air updates. So you can schedule it. You can look at update details. You can just do them automatically. It'll do it while you drive as long as it can find a cell signal to connect to. You have the Ford Assistant. Uh, you have 911 assist, which is typical for Fords, and then you have a valet mode. Okay, so under settings here, you have something called the Ford Assistant, and you can actually program a wake-up word so that you don't even need to push the button for the voice command that's on the steering wheel. You can just say, hey Ford, or hey Bronco, or whatever you want to use, and it will automatically activate the, the, the uh, voice command system. Okay, and then you can set if you want an advanced mode, if you want phone confirmation, voice command lists are on and off, if you want voice command help, all those settings are right in there. Okay, let's go over to the features button. Now, under driver assistance is a, uh, where you're gonna find your safety stuff. So, cruise control right now is set to adaptive. Now, there are some people that don't want adaptive cruise control. This is where you turn that off. Because it's a little warning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it back to adaptive, but you that's where you change that. Lane keeping system, well, do I want, uh, let's see, lane keeping mode. I can select between alert, aid, and alert and aid. So when you cross over the line, currently it's just going to alert you. Um, if you do the aid, it's just going to steer you. And if you do alert and aid, it will give you both. And this is the same way. So I can have that lane keeping intensity high, normal, or low. So you have it high, what's going to happen is this going to steer a little bit more vigorously to get you back into the center lane. It'll be a little more sensitive. Um, low is less sensitive. Uh, so that's where you make those adjustments. Pre-collision assist, warning, braking, steering. So you can say, okay, I want pre-collision assist on or off. You just click that. Uh, distance indication, it'll tell you how far you, away you are from the car in front of you. Automatic emergency braking on or off, just a simple click. Evasive steering on or off. And then of course you can uh, set that alert sensitivity to high, normal, or low. And go back again. Um, rear view camera. So here you can say I want the enhanced park aids. If I turn that off, you notice I don't get the little uh, parking sensor view up here. And then you can have rear view camera delay on or off. And that's just simply, if it's on, when, you, when you're done going in reverse and you put it in drive, the rear view camera stays on for a few extra seconds. And I think until about, you get to about five miles an hour and then it shuts off. Okay. Blind spot information system, that's just on or off. Park aid sensors, front on, rear on. So you can adjust those. Let's say you're pulling a trailer uh, and it keeps beeping on you. Well, you might want to turn that one off. Okay. Um, let's see, cross traffic alert and then driver alert. So that's where your safety systems are on. Zone lighting, well, this has got kind of like the, the, the Ford F-150s have. So, and under zone lighting here, if I hit the power button, okay, now I can turn on all these lights. 
and they're 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 inside the mirrors. So uh, they're on the edges of the mirrors here, so you can see out. So they kind of shine. You can see where they're shining. Turn on the front. Turn on the rear. So for now. I'm gonna turn those off, but it's just really nice because if you decide, I just need a little light on my passenger side, you can do that. All oh, cool. Or you can say all zones and just hit the button. All right, I'm gonna hit the power off on that. Go back, towing. Okay, you can have a, a connection checklist. Okay, so it'll give you just a list of things to go through to connect. So just kind of a nice reminder. And then you can have trailer sway control on or off there. All right, you can look at the owner's manual here, right built right into the car. Of course, it's always easier to watch our video. All right, so whew, back to audio. All right, um, you know, that's, that's it on the uh, infotainment screen. It's a very responsive system. Again, it's a Sync 4, wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay, um, wireless charger. You've got plenty of USB ports. This particular trim comes with two additional USB ports in the top part of the dashboard for you to connect the GoPro to to power it and film your rides. All right, so that concludes our how-to on the Ford Bronco, and this is the Wild Track Edition and has the Sasquatch package on it. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.